This video is made possible by NordVPN. Check out my link below to get an exclusive deal and four months extra for free. Before we start today's video, make sure to like this video, comment below your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel. It's going to help to push the video to more viewers on YouTube. China is obsessed with starting World War III, apparently, at least from their latest propaganda video targeting youths. It's aimed at getting the couch potato gamers to the front line. The latest propaganda riled up nationalism once again by comparing World War III to Season 3 in a video game claiming that China is really powerful this time around. Meanwhile, Xi Jinping meeting the former president of Taiwan, Ma Ying-jeou, in Beijing the same day as Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Kishida held a summit in Washington. China plans to corrupt Taiwan from within. Welcome to China Insider, I'm David Zhang. Recently, a propaganda video in China has gone viral. It's an edited music video of tanks, cannons, and ships firing at something. The video claims that China is powerful enough for S3. Now, S3 refers to Season 3, which is a gaming term often tied to the version of a video game, especially in competitive video games, particularly end of the year world finals. Now, the, war, uh, the video here was published from a provincial communist youth league account, and so it's aimed at young people. The video itself has since been deleted after it generated so much controversy, and people also found that the footage contains US military and weapons. But it also has sparked a massive debate online. Because in China, video games like Honor of Kings or League of Legends are so popular, it's often synonymous to some of the real life talks among the young people's mind. And this meme about season three actually started recently, particularly among young gamers. Like this one, is World War III starting? And the answer says, Earth Online, again, a video game reference, is entering season three. Compared to the last two seasons, our country is scary strong. Now, the video is titled, Friends and Family, Don't Worry, the New Season, We're Ultra Strong. Thus, internet users start to compare Season 3, aka World War 3, as this new season of competitive video gaming, saying that China is now powerful, unlike the previous two world wars. So the propaganda message has some internet users believing that the official government is trying again to promote nationalism, particularly toward the couch potatoes and young gamers. While others, particularly in the video's comment section, have many passionate users calling for a decisive battle against the United States and Japan to unify the world. For example, this one reads, six items and still defending base, time to strike. A similar comment also says, six items and still fighting in base, we must ace them under their towers and take their nexus. Another says, season three start needs to wipe out four cities, Tokyo, Seoul, New York, and DC, otherwise we failed. What more says season three isn't about protecting any Chinese cities, it's about taking down Japan and using the first island chain to defend the country directly in the Pacific to match the United States. Now, this all sounds pretty crazy, like some crazy talks, right? Did they play too much League of Legends and think real life is a game of MOBA? Well, this isn't solo queue, this is reality. And uh, apparently that's some sort of a disconnect there. I don't know, but these comments are so disconnected from reality I guess that's what happens when your entire experience with war and strategy comes from being a keyboard warrior. But are the gamers actually going to go to the front line? Absolutely not. So this is another nationalism self-amusement moment aimed at intoxicating the high school students and little pinks who are brainwashed. After all, communist China is not a country that cares much about public opinions. The CCP always controls everything. So anything that the little pinks hear they will support whatever the country does. But it also does tell us that the CCP is deliberately trying to bring the country into a thinking around war preparation. Now, they want the nationalism sentiment to be at an all-time high. In fact, they want the country to support them when it comes to it. But as we know, the talk of a potential World War III over the EU preparing to go to war with Russia, it's been in the headlines. So it's not like some empty talk. But when it comes to the CCP, seems like they want to be the center of attention when it comes to which country gets to start it. Pretty odd. But other more realistic internet users are shooting down this wild dream frequency that these people are floating on. In an Ask thread on Zhihu, which is China's Quora, uh, an answer I found was quite funny. The title of the thread is, How do we evaluate the video in the season our country is ultra strong? And the answer is, Germany. I beg you to not say it like that. The last season, we were ultra powerful too. You probably get the reference, right? Nazi Germany starting World War II. Now Communist China wants to be the third guy. Another comment in a separate thread reads, 
Did you lot forget the last patch when you had a 1 in 8 score going against the Imperial Japanese? Now, of course, this is a dark humor. 1 in 8 is because, allegedly, you know, the Japanese killed that many soldiers. And another comment reads, She himself, the grandfather of little pinks, don't even dare to sign up for a ranked match. Who are they shouting about? Now, a ranked match is often referring to in video games, you have this ranked reward system, which determines your achievement and skill level. So, see kids, right? This is what happens when you spend too much time on the computer and not looking at useful stuff. Now, imagine if these young people spend their time, say, climbing over the firewall. Uh, actually get to learn about the stuff outside the censorship. That'd be amazing. I mean, they do have the time and technology, but they're simply trying to not look for it. And that's why I always appreciate the value of living outside of China, because the best thing that we have is the freedom and access to information. But you need to protect yourself when you do spend time online. That's why you need NordVPN. Have you ever come across talking about a pair of sneakers, and then suddenly you get an ad for the same item? Or you decided to watch this video, did you happen to get an ad for a certain shopping website or a specific item? Well, you're being tracked online. Websites are telling advertisers what to promote to you. To stop that, I recommend using NordVPN. Just click once and you're connected to one of their servers near you or across many different countries. Your online activities are protected from your internet provider, websites, and everything else watching you. But David, can I just use any VPN to do that? No, 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 no. Because NordVPN offers something so important to us, speed. After using NordVPN for a while, here's what I've noticed. Instead of feeling like I just got shackled to protect my internet safety, sacrificing download speed and video streaming, and now I can't even remember I am using a VPN. Downloading something, NordVPN checks malware for you. And do you want an ad-free browsing experience? NordVPN blocks unwanted ads and pop-ups. It's all thanks to the comprehensive threat protection system. And the best part is you get to try it for yourself, 30-day money-back guarantee. Now, with my exclusive offer using my discount code David Zhang, or click the link nordvpn.com slash David Zhang in the description and comment, when you subscribe to a two-year plan, you get to enjoy exclusive benefits and an extra four months of free service. Head on to nordvpn.com slash David Zhang to start protecting yourself today. All right, so Chinese brainwashing seems to have reached a temporary climax in the past week or so, but not only it, because it was the climax of the so-called season three, that they're blabbering on about, but it seems like they're also fantasizing already about opening champagne bottles on Bandai Beach or Okinawa. A comment is already talking about dividing control over Australia after they take over 10 important cities, LA, New York, DC, Seoul, Tokyo, Singapore, Moscow, Paris, London, and Dubai. Well, someone under it comments, give Australia to me. I'm good at managing deserts. I think maybe China is going through a new virus outbreak, a brain-eating warm. I would like to ask what kind of Kool-Aid the Little Pinks have been drinking lately. Like, they even got a little kid now making a video in China on this platform talking about season three and global changes. He's like 11 years old. Now, there isn't even a war yet, and the CCP brainwashing and their youth are already dreaming about owning another country. From advocating for the war in the Taiwan Strait to now advocating for a world war. It's essentially the new era of the communist youth cultivated by the CCP, and they've successfully left the production line at the factory, and they've marched on. And of course, the other essence is obviously that the Chinese economy and development has entered a new low. Fitch, a credit rating firm today, cut China's outlook to negative. The latest view is for China's sovereign credit rating, and it's citing risks to public finances as the economy faces increasing uncertainty in its shift to new growth models. The one we've been talking about, which is Xi Jinping's so-called new productive forces, uh, focusing on EVs, batteries, and solar panels. Now, the outlook downgrade follows a similar move by another credit rating firm, Moody's, which was back in December of last year. And that's two already. So when the state loses its stability due to the economy being bad, they have to look for ways to inject stability into society with propaganda. And obviously this is temporary because, I mean, to be honest, how many people are going to be fooled into wanting to fight the war for Xi? Uh, there are some, but probably not a lot. However, Xi Jinping is planning to invade Taiwan by 2027, at least prepping for it. So the only way to stop that particular plan is to maximize deterrence against the invasion. Now, Xi Jinping's focus has always been two ways. 
One is to invade by force, and the other focus is to, if possible, take Taiwan without the invasion. So that's why he met with Taiwan's former president Ma Ying-jeou in Beijing today. Now, Xi Jinping deliberately pushed the date back to the exact same day that Biden would meet with Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. So it's sending a message here, right? Look, America, if you want to protect Taiwan by offering deterrence and so-called cooperation, then as Xi and the CCP, we're going to try to work to corrupt Taiwan, invade it from within. So Xi Jinping's meeting with Ma signals another attempt to use pro-Beijing voices in Taiwan. And the meeting was also attended by this man, Wang Huning. He oversees the plan to use cognitive warfare against Taiwan, to use propaganda and infiltration to destroy the Taiwanese people from within. And Ma and his associated party, the KMT, or the Nationalist Party, has been under the CCP influence for many years now. So their so-called commonality is a anti-war sort of rhetoric, saying that if we go to war with China, we're going to lose because China has a much more powerful military. Now, the other side, the current ruling party, the DPP, or Democratic Progressive Party, they're calling for a closer cooperation with the United States and allies like Japan, the Philippines, to deter war, to maximize the uh, strength and the deterrence on the side of Taiwan so that China does not invade, knowing that the risks is too high. So this was supposedly the last part of his 11-day journey in China, which was uh, coming to promote unification between Taiwan and China. Now, in this past 11 days since Ma has landed, he's teared up five times at different occasions, prompting to people online laughing about his showmanship, including once on the Great Wall while singing a song that's supposedly for against the Japanese invasion, and he starts to tear up again. Now, by meeting Xi Jinping, it shows that Beijing hasn't fully given up on the idea of this plan to use so-called peace. But I think the effort is futile. Taiwan's public opinion and the recent election of the pro-status quo Democratic Progressive Party shows that reunification is not on the minds of Taiwanese people. And people were starting to recognize how fake this idea of a peace unification plan would be. Because many more Taiwanese people born today have less identity associated to mainland China, and in turn, they're losing this trust and confidence in China keeping their promises and being able to keep Taiwan as independent. Also look at Hong Kong. But in fact, it is keeping this current status quo alive because precisely we're seeing that Taiwan is ready to move on as an independent entity rather than as something belonging to China. Now, of course, this hasn't stopped the CCP from trying to change the course of that, uh, but that's for a whole nother debate. Now, before 2027, which is commonly agreed upon when Xi Jinping is likely to launch an invasion due to his age, uh, the pre uh, preparation process, and simply the struggle of power, it seems like the plan to use United Front work, which is to basically rally those forces in Taiwan who are pro-China, will continue on until the actual invasion. And it seems like we're not seeing the last of this, particularly with people that have influence somewhat like Ma ying -jeou, still in Taiwan. That's also going to continue to work their way up the ladder and eventually to try to carve a way in China in which they think will turn the tide. But in my view, like I said, it's going to be futile because more and more people recognize the tactics used by the CCP. And we're already seeing this, right? Taiwan just re-elected the DPP for the third time, which is unprecedented in the history of Taiwan's election. And by having elections themselves, the very existence of this term president, right? Ma ying -jeou was one. It's already an irony in the CCP's attempt to talk it out, which they won't. It's just all about forces in the end. And uh, we hope to deter that. All right, that's it today for the episode on uh, how China is talking about the season three warfare, the World War III talk, and uh, what they're doing to try to convince some parts of Taiwan to continue to believe China. If you enjoy the content, leave a like, comment below your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, bye-bye.